Welcome to ECLMO Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed how to magnetize a material using electric method. And we said if you have a magnetic material and you place it inside a solenoid which is carrying direct current, current which is moving in a one direction, then this material is going to acquire magnetism and the poles or the polarities of this magnet which will be formed can be determined using Fleming's right hand grip rule for solenoid carrying current or the Crock rule. Now in this lesson, we are going to discuss two other methods of magnetizing a material that is hammering, which is a mechanical method, and the induction method. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to explain how to use a mechanical method that is hammering to magnetize a material so that it acquires the two polarities that is North Pole and South Pole and also how to use induction method to magnetize magnetic materials. So the first method that we are going to magnetize a material is hammering method. Hammering method is a mechanical method of magnetizing materials and in this method we utilize the earth's magnetic field. We utilize the earth's magnetic field to magnetize magnetic material and in this case we are going to consider a steel bar. So what you do, the, you take the material or the steel bar that you want to magnetize and then you position it in a north-south direction in such a way that it orient or it is in line with the earth's magnetic field so it should be in a north-south direction. Another important thing you should note is that you don't position it vertically if this is the ground, then you position it at an angle theta so that magnetization can take place effectively. Then another thing that you do now after positioning like that, then you will hammer it severally on the upper part. After hammering it, what you will realize is that the point which is facing north will acquire the north pole and then the point facing south will acquire the South Pole. So what happens? How does magnetization take place after hammering? When you are hammering, remember, this material which you are hammering, which is at an angle with the ground and facing in a north-south direction, north-south direction, this material has what we call domains from what we discussed in domain theory. It has domains since it's a magnetic material. And these domains have dipoles which are facing in a common direction inside a domain and in different direction in different domains. Now what happens when you hit this magnet? Remember these domains, all these dipoles are facing like that. Now when you knock this mag or magnetic material, what will happen, you will increase the rate of vibration of the domains. If these domains vibrate vigorously, then the dipoles inside will also vibrate. And as the vibration increases as you continue knocking, then the intermolecular force between them will be weakened. And if the intermolecular force between them is weakened, then around this material, there's a magnetic field of the earth let's say it's facing not like that, then it, these dipoles can be easily moved by the magnetic field of the earth. Now, after hammering this material, where the particles now, which we call the domains, will move, uh, all the domains will have dipoles which will be oriented in a north-south direction of the earth. So in the process, we have achieved the common orientation or the common axis uh, direction of the dipoles. And in that case, we will have a material with the south pole and the north pole in that case. If this is north pole, then it means this is the north pole of the earth. And then on this side here, it will be on the south pole of the earth's surface. So an application of this one, we can use this method to make simple magnets, even in the lab. 
which can attract smaller uh, particles which are magnetic. The other method of magnetizing material is induction method. And induction method applies a principle that when a magnetic material is in contact with a magnet which has a magnetic field, it gets magnetized in a way that the, mag the magnet induces magnetism to the magnetic material, hence aligning the dipoles in that magnetic material. So for you to magnetize a material using induction method, then you need a permanent magnet. Permanent magnet in this case is going to give us a magnetic field. Let's say this is our permanent magnet with North Pole and South Pole. Then now you bring a magnetic material, like in this case we can take an iron nail in contact with this permanent magnet. Now when you put this nail in contact like that, this nail becomes magnetized. Now, if you bring the second nail and attach it to the second, to this first nail there, it will also get magnetized. Now what happens? This, this first nail will gain magnetism, and when it gains magnetism, it becomes a temporary magnet, which will make or which will have an opposite pole in contact with the first or with the permanent magnet, and then the other end will have at the same pole like the magnetizing pole. So this one will be North Pole. Now when it becomes a magnet like this, when you introduce the second nail, the second nail will get attracted in a way that it will also get magnetized and gain opposite polarity that is South Pole at this point and then it gains the same polarity as the magnetizing a pole at the other end as North Pole. So what happens when you introduce a, mag a magnetic material like a nail towards the end, one end of this permanent magnet like that? Let me draw this nail as big as that one here. Then what happens, this nail has domains which also have dipoles. Now the dipoles were facing in different directions in these domains, but now when you introduce it to the field, due to the field of this magnet, of this magnet which we have up here, the dipoles will be oriented in one direction like that. Therefore, this nail becomes a temporary magnet. Now, when it becomes a temporary magnet, it means it must have North Pole and South Pole. Therefore, the end which is close to the magnetizing a pole will become opposite pole. That's why attraction takes place. And then the end which is far will become North Pole. Now, when you bring the second nail here, when you bring the second nail, this second nail also had domains which had dipoles and these dipoles also get oriented in one direction and therefore where the heads of this dipole is are they become north pole and then where the tail is this part here becomes south pole so what happens is that these two get magnetized because of the magnetic field of these permanent magnets which we have here and the end that is close to this magnet will become opposite pole to the pole which is magnetizing it and the end which is very far like in this case here it becomes same pole like the pole which of that permanent magnet and then when you attach the second nail the second nail will be attracted because the first nail became a magnet and then the second nail also become magnetized and if you introduce the third nail it will also be attracted like that so we apply this uh, process of magnetizing these materials, especially soft magnetic materials in transformer magnets, electric motors, and even in generators. So it's important to note that both methods involve the alignment of magnetic domains within the material, which result to magnetization. In this case, when I'm saying both methods, I'm referring to the hammering method that we discussed earlier and the induction method that we have just discussed now. 
Another important thing is that hammering relies on mechanical energy you have to heat, while induction method utilizes the influence of the external magnetic field, which we obtain from the permanent magnet which we introduce during magnetization. So let's try a question here. The question reads, two nails were attached to a magnet as shown below. On the diagram, indicate the polarities of A and B and state what will be observed. Now in the diagram A, we have a south pole permanent magnet, two nails attached to it. When a nail is attached or attracted to a magnet, it means it gets magnetized. And then for it to be attracted, the pole which is close to the magnetizing pole should be opposite. So here it should be opposite to the pole which is magnetizing. So this one is north pole. And if this is north pole, this case here also B is north pole. North pole. And then if this is north pole, the far end will gain opposite pole as the one which has already been gained or it will gain the same pole as the magnetizing pole. So here it will be south pole. Also A now is south pole. So pole A is south pole. Pole B is north pole. Now what will happen, remember, at this point A and then we have the other nail. These are similar poles which are close to each other. Look at this. This is south pole. This one here is south pole. And this is also a south pole. Now, since like poles repel, so here there will be a repansion between the nails. Now, let's look at the second question. We have two magnets with opposite poles, two nails attached to them, and then they are brought close. Now, what will happen? This side here, which is close to the first magnet, will gain opposite pole to that of north pole. So it means this south pole then pole A will become North Pole. This is North Pole. Then the other side, this one will gain opposite pole like the magnetizing pole, which here it will become North Pole. Then point B now will become same pole like the magnetizing pole, which is South Pole. Then now here we have two unlike charge poles close together. Now when we have two unlike poles, then it means here, attraction will take place from the law of magnetism and like poles attract while like poles repel so in the first case they will gain like poles they will repel in the second case they will gain unlike poles and they will attract or attraction will take place so that marks the end of our lesson today in the next lesson we will discuss stroking method